Hey folks, it's Nate. Thanks for joining me as we once again look to the horizon. I'm still sticking with this slightly different camera setup. Hopefully it, it's working for you. I wanted to talk a little bit about writer's block because I had some writer's block this week and it applies just as much to editing as it does to any other part of the writing process. At least that's my experience. If yours is different, by all means, let me know down in the comments below. I'd be happy to hear about how you keep on task editing when you have writer's block in the normal sense. Now, I'll admit, sometimes what I do to get past writer's block will be to edit stuff that I've already done. But on occasion, as was the case this week, I, I will go to try and do editing, and I'll my mind will be just as blank when I'm going over what I've already written as it is when I'm trying to write something new. And when you find yourself in that situation, your editing is about as effective as staring at a blank page and trying to write something. So I didn't get a whole lot done uh, as compared to what I wanted to do. I did about half a chapter this week, which is really uh, not where I wanted to be. I couldn't, when I'm in good form, I can edit probably about two to two and a half chapters a week. But I had a solid four days where I just had, I had serious writer's block. So I wasn't able to get a whole lot done there. So I had to, I had to beat writer's block and I have a, pretty simple recipe for that and that is that I read um, I went out and uh, there's a Timothy Zahn novel I've been wanting to read for a little while so I got that from the library and I read through that uh, and I sat down and I did some um, I reread uh, a little bit of Girl Genius which is a classic web comic I've talked about on my other channel which I think is quite good and uh, I went back and I look through some of the history books that I've been meaning to uh, plow through that I haven't really touched yet. Uh, Rick At Atkinson's The Day of Battle, which is the second book in his Liberation Trilogy, uh, has been on my to-be-read list for quite some time. So I went ahead and I started that. I don't know how long it will actually take me to get through it. The first book took me nearly four months because I was reading it in very small chunks uh, every night over the course of, you know, several months. Um, so I don't know how long it'll take me to read, but I have started the journey, and hopefully I will finish it at some point in the near future. Uh, in the meantime, I have gotten back into writing form, which is very nice. Uh, I started by writing another essay uh, in the series that I've been working on for a while, and I managed to finish that up last night and get about halfway through another one. Um, and that makes me feel quite good. Uh, it is nice to be back in the saddle. And... I really think that for writers, writer's block is treated as, as more of a hurdle than it should be. A lot of times, it's just a matter of correctly priming the pump. If you have an idea you've been trying to work out and you can't get it down on the page, a lot of the times you need to set it aside and you need to just graze for a while. And you probably won't come back to it for a long time. You may be able to write other things in that time, and a lot of times when I have writer's block in one story, what I'll do is I'll shelve it and I'll go to another. This is a great way to not make a whole lot of progress in any one story for a long period of time. But as you develop discipline, you, you do start to uh, be able to focus on stories longer and you will not develop writer's block as often. Uh, so definitely sticking with it is one big part of you know developing those instincts and those sensibilities that will help you slog through this. Um, and another part of it is you do, if the stories are really things you have worked out and you are passionate about and you are ready to tell, they will keep coming back to you and you will eventually come back around to that story probably faster than you think. Life is not an all or nothing gamble all the time. A lot of the times when you are working on something and you just can't work on it anymore, it's time to work on something else and get something else done or at least make progress on something else because you're not making progress on what you're doing right now. And again, a lot of the times that works. In this case, uh, as you get more familiar with your own rhythms and your own habits, you will be able to diagnose this faster and faster. And there are times, as there were this week, where simply putting your nose to the grindstone and trying to push through it is going to do more harm than good. Now, that's not always the case, and I am certainly not advocating for just walking away from the grind every time uh, you become a little bit tired. But there are certainly times when you have to step back and you have to learn to diagnose those times 
or you are going to just run yourself into a corner where you cannot progress at all. And there are, I think, writers who have done that to themselves and just focus so hard on one problem that they, they burned out and they haven't produced anything. Um, I, I don't know enough about famous authors to really identify those, but I know I saw it happen when I was in college. Um, and at the same time, it's tempting to say, oh, well, so-and-so is just burned out on writing and they're not progressing. Um, avoid that. Try not to diagnose this problem in other people. Um, I would say really the only author you are, you, you will be able to develop enough familiarity about in that kind of respect is yourself. Um, this is a, a very, very subjective judgment. It varies a lot person to person. Uh, so try not to project that onto other people, but definitely focus on developing a sense for that in yourself. Because the sooner you can correctly diagnose that and take the time off and do the priming of the pump that you need to, I think the faster you will be able to get past writer's block of this particular variety and get back into things. And um, after one, no, two, really two days of of struggling to write and either not getting anything down or um, writing a couple of paragraphs and then throwing them out because I realized it was totally incomprehensible nonsense. I realized that I needed to take this time off and get back into the game. And it's important to have that mindset of you are taking time off so you can get ready to get back in the game. Um, having that mindset prevents you from, from wandering really far afield and just going completely scatterbrained and not thinking about projects or anything else, your mind should still be working on the craft of writing, even if you're not doing it. A lot of the times you have probably um, really overexerted yourself. And I'd say I have, in the last year, I have put more simultaneous projects on my plate and, and written more words than I have at any point in my life. And I think I, I just needed a break to kind of take a deep breath and let all of that work I've been doing settle for a bit and and marshal my resources and everything that I learned before I could get started on it again. I think that's a, a perfectly worthy thing for authors to try and do. So um, definitely, definitely keep your finger on your own pulse and, and uh, develop a sense for when you're reaching those points that you, you really have to stop for a little bit and marshal your resources. Because if you try and push past that place, you're gonna overextend and you're gonna do yourself a mischief. Not necessarily a physical mischief, although um, I do know of one writer who spent so much time at their desk in college that they um, they did get ill, like physically ill. Uh, they caught a, a pretty bad case of, of bronchitis and pneumonia. Uh, just because they've been working so hard on all these writing projects. So that is a possibility, uh, but you may just burn out. In fact, uh, of the people that I stayed in touch with after I graduated from college, almost everyone had a year to 18 months at a minimum where they had a very hard time writing anything at all. And I know that was true of myself as well. There was a serious period of burnout after all that heavy academic work and fi writing final projects and all this other stuff that we were doing in seminars for pretty much two years running of, of our school career where afterwards we were just burnt out and we didn't, we didn't know how to um, marshal our creative faculties back to the task of doing writing. And yeah, that kind of burnout, I think it's, it's healthier to address it uh, if you can early on than, than trying to push through it. Uh, and that is, um, something I have kind of learned to do uh, running a blog for so long and doing um, a lot of heavy writing for that. I've learned to judge when those times are. And it's not something I hear people talk a lot about in the writing and creative community. Uh, so I thought I would do this blog on that subject as opposed to um, the writing I'm doing, which is you know pretty much what I've been talking about for the last few weeks. So hopefully you found that useful instead of a discussion about writing itself. Let me know what your favorite way to get past writer's block is in the comments below. There's a like and a subscribe button down there you can use as you see fit, and I will talk to you later.